Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another Make a Card Monday video. Today I'm planning to create a birthday card using this stencil from Newton's Nook. This is the cloud stencil. And the thing that's kind of really neat about this is you can use both sides of the cloud stencil and kind of like move it around your card and make a bunch of clouds. So that's what I'm planning to do today. I'm gonna to use a few different colors of Distress Oxide ink, and I'm going to do it on top of black cardstock. The thing that's cool about Oxide ink is that they are more opaque than dye inks, so you can use them on dark surfaces. So I'm gonna be using a few different, let's see, that was stupid. Probably these are probably about the right size of blender brushes that I wanna to use today, and I'll have one for each one, so that's kinda of nice. Okay, I'm gonna start at the top and then move down. I want to have, let's see here. I might have to grab some additional ink colors, we'll see. <laughs> but I do want to tape this down first. Using some ThermoWeb Purple Tape, I'm just gonna start right here. And I think I will start with Mustard Seed. I'm just gonna blend up from the cloud and this actually won't take too long to build the color. All right, and then I can lift up my stencil. And now I have that cloud line. Before I move on to the next, I'm going to use a baby wipe and just wipe this off. And the ink should come off really easy. I'm also using a paper towel just to dry it off a little bit since that baby wipe was wet. All right, so this was the one I used there. So now I'm going to turn it and I can position it so that it's a different, kind of like a different line of clouds. And I'm going to move on to peacock feathers. Doing the same thing, I'm loading up that brush and then I can start bringing in the color from right below that line. Move that, now I have the blue line. Wipe my stencil. And then come in with that paper towel as well. All right, and now I can turn the stencil. In fact, I can even turn it the opposite direction, like turn it over. And now I have another line of clouds. So you have almost an endless amount of lines of clouds to choose from. If you use the full length, you'd have four different lines that you can blend from. All right, I'm going to go to Seedless Preserves. Just blending that from the line of clouds, super fast and easy. All right, I was using this end, so now I'm gonna turn it and do this other end. And I'm also going to switch colors. I'm going to go to Picked Raspberry. And I think I'm going to bring in some ripe persimmon. All right, so now I have all of those clouds ready to go. I'm gonna set this aside to dry while I clean up my work surface. I'm going to speed along the drying process by hitting this with a heat tool. I'm going to be doing my really large grating in embossing powder. So I'm going to test out to make sure that the embossing powder isn't sticking. Looks like it is sticking to some areas just checking everything to see which areas I need to make sure I hit with my heat tool. Okay, so it looks like along this line and over on these sides here. The reason you wanna test it before you go into it is because now I can take a clean dry brush and just brush off any of that embossing powder, re-dry my piece, Test again, and if everything looks good, then I can go ahead with my embossing. All right, I'm gonna let this cool off, because it's still pretty hot, and then I'm gonna test it again. 
once it's cooled off, because I just don't want anything sticking because it's hot, you know? Okay, let's test this again. Looking like everything's sliding off really easy, which is what I want to see. All right, looks like I'm about ready. There's a couple little spots right here where things are sticking, but I don't think it's anywhere near where the, my greeting will be, so it should be just fine. Using my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool. And the stamp set I'm using today is this one from Simon Says Stamp called Big Birthday Greetings. And I'm gonna use this one down here, this really large, like full on greeting. All right. And just to make it extra safe for all of my embossing, I'm gonna use an embossing powder tool. Um, this is from EK Success. Any of the powder that I put out here can be wiped off after I'm done embossing. This just adds a little bit of powder to the surface of the paper and eliminates any of those spots where embossing powder might stick, where it's not supposed to be. I'm using Versamark ink. It's my favorite ink for embossing, although there are some other embossing inks out there. This is just the one that I've used for years and it works great, so I haven't felt the need to swap it out for anything else. It's a really big stamp, so I'm gonna make sure I walk my fingertips over every single part of it. Looks like I didn't miss anything. I'm gonna go around and just wipe away any embossing powder that's hanging out in areas where I don't want it. All of those tests and prep work have really helped though. All right, and I'll hit this with my heat tool. I want to share a, an embossing tip for you guys. Um, I don't remember where I saw this tip. I think I may have seen it in a Facebook group, but someone said when you're embossing on a dark piece of cardstock and sometimes the embossing powder almost looks like it's melting into the cardstock, try heating it from the back first and that will melt everything and then it will prevent it from melting into the cardstock. So I've tried it a few times and I have had really good results. So I just wanted to mention it in case any of you have that issue. I'm gonna try it again today. And then you can switch to the front. Okay, so I have a really crisp embossing and the paper didn't warp too much, so I love that. By the way, the paper I'm using today is black onyx cardstock from Gina K Designs. I'm going to put this on a white card base, but I'm going to cut it down just a little bit by using the A2 layer dies from Waffle Flower. I think uh, this set and also the A7 layer dies are my most used dies. Okay, so not only did that cut it out, but it really flattened it out a lot too. I'm using a score buddy to score my card base at five and a half. This will give me a top folding card. And I'll put some foam tape on the back of the card. And I don't scrimp on the foam tape so that when I put my card through the mail, I won't have any sagging or drooping areas. It'll be nice and flat. And I always use the same pattern when I'm putting foam tape on my pieces. I go around each side, one from corner to corner, and then two smaller ones to fill in the gaps. And it seems like a really a lot amount of foam tape, and it kind of is, but I think it's completely worth it. Um, I've tried doing like a um, fun foam with a little bit of glue or even a tape runner, and it works. I don't prefer it. This is just the way that I like to do it. But the other way definitely works as well. All right, and then directly onto the card. And that is the card for today. Super, super simple idea and a really simple card in its design as well. Thank you so much for watching today. If you want to pick up any of the supplies I use today, including the, the cloud stencil or the specific ink colors I use, please check out the supply list down below in the video description and also in the supply list at my blog. On screen, I've got three more videos for you to check out. These are going to be some fun card videos for you to get some inspiration from. 
Once again, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. And when you subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Sometimes my videos don't make it into subscription boxes, so that just helps you know when a new video goes up. Thanks so much today, and I will see you guys very soon for another card video.